Today's video is like going to the dentist. Nobody ever wants to do it, but it's well worth the pain. Hey everyone, it's Mark here, and today we'll be rebuilding the Walbro carburetor off the old FG Evo RC car. That's right, don't be throwing away your old carbies. I know you're all guilty of it. Well, tossing them to the side anyway. I know you've got a box full of them in the workshop somewhere. They're super easy to rebuild and it's super cheap. The rebuild kit for this Walbro 603 is about 10 Australian dollars. What's 10 Australian dollars in American currency? Like five cents, like a nickel, is it a nickel five cents? Like, like a nickel? Anyway, less than a euro if you're from the home of one fifth scale RC racing. So well worth, well worth the money to repair these rather than just uh, toss them to the side. I'll also show you how to put a bearing in one of these on the throttle shaft. That mod is one of the best things you can do for these wall road carburetors. It really transforms the throttle action. Such a valuable, such a valuable mod, that one. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Remember to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Thanks for watching, guys. The old FG Evo. What a glamour, check it out. All right, it's time to give this Walbro 603 Carby a bit of a birthday. I think it's a 603. Anyway, we've been suffering from uh, an erratic idle, hard to start, and also, I'll show you in a minute, but this butterfly here is worn out and the return spring is also broken as well. So let's get it out. So you can see here, it's not returning, the spring's broken. We'll have a close look at that. And I'll just show you the how worn the shaft is. Look at the movement in that. Wow, no wonder we were suffering from an erratic idle. What I'll do is I'll put this carby on the test motor and just show you what happens when this wears. We'll take a closer look in a minute, but I'll show you what happens to the idle on the test bed. All right, let's take a look at what we've got here. So we've got the return spring that goes in here. That will fix that butterfly valve return. We've got the carb rebuild kit that's got everything in it that's needed to rebuild the carburetor. We're also going to replace the butterfly shaft and the main butterfly there. You can see there just the movement in it. That's incredible. Look at that. Um, so we're going to replace the butterfly valve. It's literally, they're only like a dollar. And with that movement in there, you can tell already that it's worn that um, side of the butterfly plate there. And that'll just make setting idle that much harder later on. So we'll get to pulling that apart. Oh, actually just briefly, um, you'll hear me talk about the different parts of this carburetor. So this side is the metering chamber. So I'll talk about the metering chamber. And this side is the fuel pump side. You can um, tell the fuel pump side because it's got this little port here that 
transfers from the intake that pulse. So that pulse is what powers the fuel pump. So um, on your engine, if you are having trouble with starvation, not enough fuel, and you're sure that your carb is fine, that's one thing to look for. So you can put a dab of, a dab of oil or a dab of grease on there, pull your engine over, and just make sure you get pulses of air coming out of that little port because it may be blocked in there. So that's uh, one thing to look at. All right, let's pull this apart. All right, so we'll have a close look at this. This is the fuel pump side. You can see here there's a little inlet screen and you can see it's quite dirty. Look at all the dirt on that inlet screen there. That's amazing. So um, there's a new inlet screen in the kit. So we'll show you how to replace that. But all that dirt there restricts the flow of fuel into there. So um, well, worth, well worth doing this. You can see here that this is made up of a gasket and a diaphragm. That's the fuel pump diaphragm and gasket there. There's new ones in the kit, so they'll get replaced. On the other side, this is the fuel metering side. So this is the metering lever here. So there's a, a valve that sits under here that will, will be replaced and the spring will be replaced and this whole assembly. There's a couple of Welsh plugs here too that we'll be removing because they cover the idle jet and the idle jets, a bit hard to see in there, but they're very, very, very tiny holes and they can get blocked really easily. So if you're having trouble with idle as well, um, well worth, they come in the kit, well worth, they're easy to get out, take them out and give them a bit of a clean. I'll be showing you how to do that. All right, so we'll take the butterfly shaft out now. So we'll undo this screw first. We need some good pressure on there and it'll just come right out. When this goes back in, we'll be using some red lock tight from the factory. They just peen the end of that over, but that's not needed. We'll just use some red lock tight. So you can just see that the spring has lost its little tab off this end. That's why it's not returning. It's just broken, broken off there. So that'll be an easy fix on the new shaft. So we'll just try the new shaft in there and just see how it fits. Yeah, it actually feels really good. See that? No movement at all. I think what we'll do though is I'll end up um, boring these out and fitting some bearings in there. So I'll show you how I do it. I'm not sure it's a, it's a real DIY job. Uh, it could be, but we'll see. I'll do it and uh, you guys be the judge of whether it's a DIY job or not. So we'll pull that inlet screen out. I'm just gonna use a small screwdriver and just pick that out. It'll come out very easily. There it is there, full of dirt and junk. Next, we'll take the metering valve and lever out. Is this a Phillips head screw that holds that? There is a spring under there and a little sh and a little shaft there, so just be careful. That's the spring. Got to be very careful with the spring when we reinstall um, the new spring. We've got to be careful not to um, adjust that. Um, tension in that spring at all so don't pull the spring apart it needs to be um, just just how that is it's, it's a very critical piece so just get the little metering valve out now might just tip him over so there it is there it's got a rubber tip on it there that seals against the seat so that's a, a part that wears but there's a new one in the kit so we'll be replacing that the seat is the seat in there we can't replace, so uh, but that's normally fine because it's uh, it's rubber tipped, so the rubber wears well before the brass seat. All right, so we're just going to get this Welsh plug out now. So there's one Welsh plug here and one Welsh plug there. 
and I'm just going to use a fine tip screwdriver and a hammer and we're just going to force our way into those. There's the first plug out. There's the second one out. There's a little screen in under this one. Um, it's actually got some dirt in there. We'll just get that out. So you can just see here, there's a little retaining clip. There's a new one in the kit and there's a little screen as well. And that screen, it's got some dirt on it. All right, let's have a quick look how this works. So we've got pulses from the engine operating the fuel pump here. So the fuel pump supplies low pressure fuel through, this, through the screen that we've taken out, through the screen into the metering side of the engine. So the bits that we pulled out down here before, they meter the fuel into this area here. So we'll, I'll show you how that works later in detail because it needs some adjustment. So we'll be adjusting and fine tuning that on assembly. So what happens is that metering arrangement lets fuel into this area here. And it does that um, by this diaphragm here. So this diaphragm acts on uh, this valve arrangement here. So there's an area here that you need to, to uh, ensure there's kept clean as well because this section actually works on vacuum. So the more fuel that goes into the engine, the more this presses down, the more it opens up on the valve, the more fuel it lets. The less fuel, the less th this diaphragm is drawn in and the less fuel that is delivered. So enable, for, for that all to happen, it needs atmosphere pressure on the other side of this diaphragm here. And that happens through this little hole here, through here. So you need to make sure that that's nice and clean through there. You can see that's a bit dirty there. It's sucked in a bit of dirt. So again, that's vented through here. So you need to make sure that that's spotlessly clean. You can see there, there's not much of a gap there. So if you're having troubles again with fuel delivery, that's an area to look at. So pop that fuel primer off and just make sure that's nice and clean through there. So the next, we'll have a look at the jets that we've freed up from those Welsh plugs. I'll just use a, a torch here so you can see it. All right, so I've got the light set to pulse. So you can see the light pulsing in under there. So that's the high speed jet. So what happens is fuel is metered into this area here. It goes in through this intake here to the needle, and then it passes via the needle in through the filter screen and into the carbines. So you can just see how these screws work, can't you? So this high speed screw, the more you screw that through into there, the more it restricts the flow from this area here, the main fuel supply to that high speed jet. So the more that screw is backed out, the more fuel is able to pass through into there. The more it's turned in, the less fuel that's able to be delivered through that port. On the other side, you can see here, the low speed and the idle. So the idle is the first port here and then we've got the low speed. So the same thing happens. Fuel is delivered into here. It goes into the mixture screw via this inlet here. That's a fixed non-serviceable part. And then the fuel is metered by the screw here, the low speed screw. So the low speed screw restricts the fuel that is ultimately delivered into these ports. So the fuel goes in here, past the screw, out of this little port, and then delivered into there. That's what the Welsh plug covers. That's why you need to ensure those are spotlessly clean. You can see there, they're all nice and clean. I'll just show you what they look like inside the cylinder. So you can see here, that's where the high speed port comes out. In the high speed needle, when the butterfly is open, fuel is delivered in 
via that port there. We'll have a look at the low speed. So you can just see how tiny these are. That's the idle jet there. Well, it's not a jet, but that's the idle port there. Well, I suppose it's a jet. That's the idle jet there. It sits under the butterfly. You can see that black ring. That's where the butterfly normally sits. So that's the idle and the other two are the low speed. So you can see, just see how small they are and how important it is that they're kept clean. So I'm just using a little bit of mineral spirits here to give this a clean, give it a good clean and then I'll uh, use the compressor and give it a blast out with some compressed air. Give it a good blow out, make sure everything's spotlessly clean. We'll press our bearing in now. So there's the bearing. See the shaft there? It's a good fit, that bearing. So we'll press it in. It's a nice, firm fit. There it is, pushed in. see there now there's no movement whatsoever look at that and look how free it is that's going to be so much better all right it's time to get these welsh plugs back in we're going to start with the high speed jet first so we're going to put the little filter screen in it's a little bit fiddly but pretty easy Then we'll clip. So the Welsh plug sits in there like that. And then I'm gonna use this punch, put the punch in the middle and then hammer that home with a hammer. And that's it. The next Welsh plug goes in. Goes in dome side up. <clears throat> this hole punch was a three mil hole punch. And I'm gonna use a six and a half mil punch to punch this one in. So, punch there, hammer down once or twice, we'll do. That's it there. They're not going anywhere. Just make sure they're firm. They're all good. So I've got the spring sitting in place, the metering valve and assembly ready to go. I'm gonna drop it straight on the spring and push down. So straight on the spring there. And it gets pushed down and we can put the screw in. I'll just try and get my hand out of the way so you can see that. So that's what it looks like all together. I'll put the screw in now. That just gets nipped up. Now we can see the operation of that metering valve. So you can see here, the diaphragm under vacuum pushes down, lifts that valve up and enables fuel from the fuel pump side over into this. This is like a little float bowl. 
Okay, now the most important step. We're going to adjust the metering lever, which controls the metering valve. So what does it do? As fuel is used in here, it creates a vacuum. That vacuum pulls on that diaphragm and opens that valve up, letting more fuel in. So the first place to look, if you're having bogging issues, would be this diaphragm here, or a blocked hole here. So check those two. So what happens? That's the incoming fuel from the fuel pump on the other side of the carburetor. It's just transferred to here. It goes in here via the mixing screws to the high speed jet and to the low speed jet and to the idle jet. So this here has a critical measurement that's taken off this flat surface here. So if you take a straight edge and look down, it's supposed to be 1.6 millimeters. An easier way to, to check this is Walbro have left a couple of raised, um, raised castings here. Now they are 1.6 millimeters below this edge. So when we put our straight edge along there, you can see here that that metering lever is sitting just low. So what would that mean? That means that from default, this wouldn't let as much fuel in as what we need. So you can see there, we just need to adjust that. How do we adjust it? It's super easy. You just get this tab here and you lift up slightly. And then check it out again. Just a fraction more. There, perfect. So you can see now by having that up more, it lifts the needle more, lifts that valve more, lets more fuel in. So when we use the fuel out of there, the diaphragm gets drawn down, it pushes on that little metering valve a little bit more and lets a little bit more fuel in. Pretty critical step in adjusting that. All right, let's get this back together. Gasket on first, then the diaphragm. So the gasket sits on there, then the diaphragm. Then the back cover. And the prime bulb. I've made sure that's nice and clean there. More screws. So throttle shaft, new spring, we'll just put that in before the fuel pump goes on. Makes it a little bit easier. We'll install the fuel pump now. New gasket, gasket goes in the cover. New diaphragm, the diaphragm will sit. So gasket and diaphragm. We're on the home straight. Got the throttle butterfly in there now. So that little indentation just goes towards the fuel pump. Just gotta remember that because they only go in one way. I got plenty of red Loctite on my screw. I'm just gonna take the tension of that spring just so the threads in the hole of the center there. Screw this in, this needs to be nice and tight. This comes undone, it's straight into the motor. Feels so good. So much better. That throttle action now is just fantastic. Bearing in there, no movement whatsoever, none at all. 
but it feels amazing. All right, mix the screws back in. So for only a few dollars in rebuild parts, we have given this Garby a new lease on life. It feels amazing and it is going to perform amazing. Well that's it, another video done. Uh, I know it was kind of boring, long-winded. I was talking about Garby's and, and fuel pumps and metering valves and pretty boring stuff but anyway the results are amazing well worth well worth doing i really hope you guys have the opportunity to do it at home because the results re really are amazing and the bearing install i ran out of time 25 minutes of me talking about carburetors is pretty much you know, all anyone can stand so if you want to see a video just on the bearings let me know in the comments down below and I'll do a, a video just on the bearing install. Keep in mind that bearing install is unbelievable. It transforms these carbies into something truly amazing. You don't get any wear, they last longer. So many benefits from it, so let me know. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Remember to subscribe, like, comment, share, thumbs up, thumbs down if you don't like it. Maybe not the thumbs down, but the thumbs up. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.